If you grow mangoes, then you know just how exciting the springtime can be. Our trees are in their most active phase. You'll see your trees get taller. They start to sprout new leaves. And most importantly, they're making flowers. But springtime could also cause frustration and anxiety. You start to notice some sickness, some fungus, some mold. Maybe your tree isn't showing any signs of growth. Maybe your tree hasn't flowered. Or if it has, the flowers have dried up and died. If you're one of those people that's stressing, you're anxious, you feel like your tree is not as advanced as it's supposed to be, allow me to put your mind at ease by showing you my trees, each of which is at different stages in the fruiting cycle. Let's start with this Glen variety mango right here behind me. Of all my mango trees this season, this guy was the first one to produce flowers. Today's March 7th, but this guy started flowering all the way back before Thanksgiving, all the way back in November. Not only did he flower early, he started to produce fruit. There was tiny little fruit trying to set on this tree. None of my other trees even had flowers yet, including other glens. And this guy was trying to fruit. Then we had a cold spell. The panicles all kind of dried out. The fruit kind of dried out and fell off. Then in January, it flowered again. That time, the flowers just dried up and died. And now here we are, March 7th, and right here, he's flowering again. Maybe this will be the one that takes. But lesson number one is don't compare. Don't worry if one of your trees starts to flower and your others haven't started yet. Don't worry if your neighbor's tree is full of flowers and yours doesn't even look like it's starting to push a panicle yet. Rule number one, don't compare. Now let's jump to this Naomi variety mango tree. He's at the other end of the spectrum. He only just started flowering in the last two days. People have been asking me, how's the bloom going? I said, things are going good, except for I don't think I'm gonna get fruit off my Naomi this year because he never flowered. And I'm driving up the driveway yesterday. I look over my right shoulder. I see a couple panicles with flowers. I look up, the tree is loaded with flowers. Looks like I will be getting mangoes off this guy anyhow. But he decided to flower four months later than the first tree on my property. Now let's take a look at this Nam Doc Mai. It's my Goldilocks tree. The Glen flowered really, really early. The Naomi flowered really, really late. This guy flowered around January. And by the end of February, it had already started to produce fruit. And now we have fruit set. Look at there's actual fruit on this tree. Here we have another Glen, and you can see, first week of March, and it's just starting to produce its first flowers. This Glen is only two trees down from the first Glen I showed you, the one that's been flowering since November. Remember, these trees operate according to their own internal schedule. Now let's talk about growth. I put this Julie in the ground eight months ago, and the only new growth I see is about the height of my pinky, but it's loaded with flowers. Compare that Julie to this coconut cream, tons, tons of new growth, but not a flower to be seen. Rule number two, these trees are gonna allocate energy to grow whatever the tree thinks it needs to grow. That Julie decides it wants to grow flowers. The coconut cream I showed you decided it wants to sprout and grow larger. This Maha Chinook behind me, it's decided to only put out one somewhat sparse panicle of flowers. Now maybe in the next few weeks I'll see more, maybe not. He's not growing any taller, he's not putting out any more leaves, maybe it's dedicating its energy to developing a root system. Maybe it's using its energy to store more energy to be used later on. But this season, this guy's definitely not dedicating energy toward growing flowers. Up to now we've been looking at some fairly young trees, you know, maybe up to age five or six. But this is a 20 year old tree. This is a Balliot variety. This is our house variety here at Sleepy Lizard. And look at, he's producing brand new panicles of flowers. These aren't even open yet. But if I lift the camera up high, you'll see that he's been flowering for a few months now and it's already starting to produce fruit. The same is true for this well-established Valencia Pride. I've got brand new flowers. I've got old dead flowers. And I've also got somewhere up here, here it is, fruit starting to set. 
Lesson number three, your tree could be at various stages in the fruiting cycle all at the same time. Everything you just saw applies to potted trees as well. Whether it's this three gallon pickering or this 25 gallon Edward Kent hybrid, your potted trees will be in various stages of the fruiting cycle all at the same time. I'm actually kind of excited about this Edward Kent because it just decided to flower two days ago. Let's take a look. I was kind of in a hurry to get this guy in the ground, but now that I see all these flowers, I think I'm gonna leave them in a pot for one season just to show people that you can get fruit in potted fruit trees. And look, this guy's not only putting out flowers, but he's also pushing new growth. And like the Gary and the Naomi, I thought this guy wasn't gonna flower and fruit at all this year. Now I'm hopeful that I'm gonna get some fruit. What did we just see? On the one hand, we saw a mango tree loaded with fruit. On the other, we saw a coconut cream that didn't even flower this year. I showed you a tree that started flowering super early. I'm standing in front of a tree that decided to start flowering late. The point is, as long as you're doing the basics, the rest is up to the trees. If you're given the right water, the right nutrition, the right amount of sunlight, the trees are gonna do the rest themselves. Which brings me to tip number four. Be very, very careful where you go for advice. Because if you go in an online forum and you say, what's wrong with my mango tree? The first person's gonna tell you too much water. The next person's gonna tell you not enough water. The next person's gonna tell you too much fertilizer. The next person's gonna tell you not enough fertilizer. Then someone's gonna say you have to drive a rusty nail into the trunk and then someone's gonna say you have to hit it with a baseball bat. And believe me when I tell you, I did not make any of that up. I have seen that with my own eyes over and over and over again. Social media resources. Be cool, be chill. Let mother nature do her job. The point is this is a hobby and it's supposed to be a relaxing hobby. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. Once you get a few years under your belt, you'll know that if your tree isn't flowering exactly as early as it did last year, it'll probably flower in the next couple of weeks. You'll also know that if it doesn't flower on any given year, maybe the tree just needed to take a break. You'll learn to block out all the wacky ideas of how to get more fruit from your tree. You'll become in tune with nature. You'll be giving your tree what it needs. You'll be removing the things that impede its growth. And year after year, you will taste the literal fruits of your labor. Now, if you'd rather taste the fruits of my labor, then go to guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. That's where we sell our fruit. We sell these mangoes when they're in season. We sell avocados in season. We have a bunch of other tropical fruit. We sell our shirts and hats out there. And nothing makes me happier than the feedback I get when someone tastes a new mango variety they've never had before. Now, I just happened to notice my, my mulberry tree over here has some, has some fruit on it. So I'm gonna pick me some mulberries and have a nice snack. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.